Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to Atticus Live, where we, yes, today we're drinking beer, <laughs> wine, <laughs> and beer, and talking about boats. I'm Jordan. I'm Desiree. <laughs> and, and, I'm, and I'm Steve. This is the big man himself. This is my father. <laughs> so for any of you guys that have not had the pleasure of meeting my dad, um, he was in a lot of our uh, earlier Atticus updates and uh, a lot of our... Um, um, what, what, what would we call it? Yeah, like our boatyard videos and a lot of our uh, early woodworking projects, he was a really big part of. So Not only that, he was there when we bought the boat. He was there when we had breakdowns about the boat. He mm -hmm. spent about two weeks with us in the boatyard two different times. Uh, he came with us on our first overnight sail. Um, so... He's been there pretty much all, all along. <laughs> yeah, yeah, literally from the very moment, the first moment that we saw Atticus, the big man was there. Mm -hmm. Corey Brown oh, Corey, coming in with the first super chat of the evening. <laughs> Got cheers of Corey Brown, big guy. All right, thank you, thank amigo. You. That's so nice. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, all right, well, as things are getting kind of warmed up, as people are uh, settling into their seats, so to speak, uh, we were talking about just... Uh, doing kind of going over the projects that my dad was a part of a lot of the woodworking projects that uh that he was helping out with but before that let's do some shout outs yeah. so desiree we got guy c we've got wayne Payne, nice elizabeth miller hey Power elizabeth watches. so Thank you. <laughs> real quick elizabeth miller and her husband sent us these super cool watches you can't see that because the camera won't focus on it but that's the project atticus logo what? And we get to match. <laughs> How, and important. then Desiree is very excited that we get to match. <laughs> uh, Chris Hollandale, Corey Brown, Ernest Daugherty, uh, John Peterson. Uh, he is a supporting dad. That is very true. Harrison Wheeler. Hey, uh, Harrison. He says, howdy, Jordan's dad. I love the hatch cover you designed and built. That's really cool. And cool. Harrison, Jordan spent a day tinkering with the drone. Uh, I was going to send you a picture of him just like, Doing this with all the lights we, going, we gotta noises talk. happening. <laughs> Harrison, we gotta talk. Yeah. We, we got a lot of catching up to do. Yeah. So we got Saltwater, Ron Travis, Safety First, Gus C, Lisa Zach, Brennan Williams, SV Spirit Libre. Cool. Thank you so much for joining, guys. Really appreciate you hopping on our live stream today. Uh, well, you ready to hop into? The I'll say a shout out to. Jimmy and Kathy and the kids, I see you guys oh, are yeah. on too. So. Yep. Hey, nice. there you go. And then let us know where you guys are tuning in live from. We, we oh, like seeing where you're from. Julie and Jason. Ah. Hey, everybody. <laughs> All right. Hey, Julie. <laughs> and Derek Woodwin. <laughs> and then my, my mom, mom says hi. <laughs> yeah, my mom is here, but she does not want to be seen because well, she's a little bit sick. And so she feels like she's not. Tell them you've all been sick. She's not looking her best. First it, it was me, then it was. Steve, then it was Jordan, now it's Rita. Well, and then and then it kind of came back around, now I'm getting it again. Yeah. <laughs> I actually just got over a sinus infection. It's like germs so. roulette. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Thank you to Zach Drys. Zach You're Drys. Amazing. Cheers, amigos. Cheers. <laughs> Gracias. Mm. Okay, so we'll get into real quick, for you guys that just joined, this is my father, the big man himself, Steve. He was a big part of a lot of the woodworking projects that we did on Atticus. And so we're going to do a quick uh, photo uh, slideshow and show you all of the woodworking projects that he was a part of and that we've done on the boat. And then we'll open up the floor for questions. So start shooting us your questions. We're going to try and talk about woodworking at least at the beginning of this live stream. So any questions about wood? <laughs> Anything you want to ask the big man, shoot it, Real shoot it quick, at us. Real quick, Gussie says, how is your Spanish vocabulary? I did teach Steve one Spanish word. Basada. Almost. Right. Bas Basuda. 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 There you go. <laughs> he needed to know where to take the trash. Nice. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> yeah. All right. and, well, we might as well teach him uh, Madera. Madera, yeah. Which is wood. Mm -hmm. So today oh, we are talking about Madera. <laughs> Hablamos... <laughs> De. De Madera. <laughs> okay, that's enough of that. So, uh, project number one. So this is the uh, sliding hatch and turtle hatch combo. In fact, big guy, if you wouldn't mind, if you wouldn't mind just like quickly, maybe like, you know, 30 seconds each project, even less, just describe what we did there. 
Sure. <clears throat> the sliding hatch is, uh, the outside is all out of mahogany. The top there that you see is mahogany uh, veneer. <clears throat> the sides, front and back, are uh, solid mahogany. Up underneath, that you can't see, is an oak uh, framework. I made both the turtle hatch and the sliding hatch as strong as I possibly could because I thought the kids might be walking on it. It's on top of the deck or the cabin top. Um, and just to be clear, so we, we built both the turtle hatch and the sliding hatch there. So the one is painted white and the other we, we varnished. Mm -hmm. And so they're strong. Uh, I can walk on it and uh, they don't move at all. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's the tiller. Uh, I made that out of uh, <clears throat> oak and uh, from a line drawing. Actually, all these projects are all from line drawings that Jordan would send me uh, via messenger. And I would use those line drawings to uh, to build it. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, this is uh, Desiree's first attempt and uh, excellent attempt at uh, epoxy finishing. Yep, thank she you. She finished that. <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah, she did. Nice one, bud. Thank you. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah. also, I'm just going to interrupt real quick. If you guys have any questions about any of these projects or, you know, how Steve chooses his wood and um, things like that, let us know. Shoot away. Yeah. All wood questions welcome. Yes. Okay. <laughs> this is an idea the kids had that <clears throat> I think is great and is incredibly functional. It's a table they use for dining. Uh, it hooks to the lower washboard there in the uh, companionway area. And it has uh, a couple of legs and the uh, aft of the boat. Uh, and that <clears throat> the table actually folds out. So to stow it, you can put the legs up underneath. The table folds in half and it stows very nicely. Right. And it's a veneer top with uh, mahogany legs and mahogany uh, sides. That's the forward hatch. Uh, that's made out of teak. <clears throat> uh, that's I used dovetail joints with that because I knew that was going to have to be very strong. I'd have to put up with a lot of um, well, rough seas, winds, uh, banging up and down. Um, Jordan put in, was it like a half inch or five eighths inch thick of... Uh, half inch Lexan. Yeah. Lexan Bulletproof. Uh, Right. Yeah, right. technically, well, <laughs> we don't know for a fact, but we're told it's bullet bulletproof. Yeah. I guess it would depend on the bullet, really. Yeah, I don't think 50 cal, it, it would probably make it through. <laughs> Let's hope we never have to test that, Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, but... And all, all the, I will say, too, that all these projects, uh, <clears throat> I did the woodworking, uh, but the kids here did the finishing. Uh, they're both excellent um, uh, epoxy finishers. Yeah. Steve? Yeah, you, you, you learn something working on yachts, at least. Yeah. <laughs> Veer ye. Veer ye. Thank you. Cheers. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Veer ye. And let's, uh, let's read some comments and then move on to the next couple projects. Okay, so there's, there's more to come, but yeah, we'll address some comments first. Um, yep. Steve Ford says, what is the longest lasting clear coat y'all have used? Great well, question. That would be what we've been using the whole time, which is basically our system is... Uh, we seal the wood with uh, a West System, West System epoxy using the special clear hardener, and all the other hardeners will leave some kind of a a blush, so it's not perfectly clear. But the special clear hardener, you you reduce the strength a little bit, but it's perfectly clear, and so you can do a coat every half hour depending on the temperature. So in five hours or less, like two and a half hours, you can get five coats, which totally seals the grain. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, I'll do a two-part polyurethane. Um, I've been using Allbright, which is an all-grip product, and that's actually, it's technically a three-part polyurethane because you don't use a thinner. It's actually a, uh, it's just a third part. And so anyway, um, that's uh, that's been what we've used, and some of this wood is lasted a long, long time without us having to do anything. I'm, I'm, I'm talking years uh, between doing maintenance coats, and we're about due for a maintenance Wait, coat. Wait, before we move on, let's segue into a touchy-feely question, which I think is a good one. Uh, Chelsea Olson says, not a woodworking question, but what do you think of your kid's adventure? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> right now, I think it's wonderful. Uh, I'll be honest, it took uh, Rita and I a while to kind of get used to it. Uh, the fact that the kids were just gone and and you know we had no well we do have a way to communicate with them and that's been wonderful in fact even underway delorme is a great uh, product um but uh we're getting better at uh working with their adventure 
And, and of course, it's great when we get to visit like right now. Yeah. I was going to say, when I first met you guys, um, I think Jordan was saying that you were kind of nervous about traveling abroad to kind of third world countries and things like that to come visit us. Has mm-hmm. that changed since? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it has. Um, you know, I think that's it's opened my eyes, these guys with their cruising and going to all these different places as to, you know, how nice these places are. And um, <clears throat> just the places themselves, the people, everything. So it's yeah. good. Well, and one more question that's related. Uh, what did Dad think when you told him your plans? Good question. If you can even remember specifically when I first mentioned it, but what do you think you thought when we first brought up the idea? Yeah. My, my mom's screaming in the bedroom. She's just freaking out. Yeah. And yeah, like I think I, I said, it was it was tough at first. There's absolutely no doubt about it. Um, it's just such a unique lifestyle uh, and one that neither Rita and I had um, a lot of experience with. But again, it's it's great. I love it. I think you guys are doing great stuff. And um, well, even this sort of thing where you get to show other people the great stuff. It's good. It's cool. Thank you, Steve. And I do want to address real quick. Gus C says, Polly over epoxy, double question mark. Well, I do want to clarify a lot of people say that you don't want to put polyester over epoxy, like polyester resin. I'm not talking about polyester, I'm talking about polyurethane, um, poly, two-part polyurethane paint, which definitely can go over epoxy. Um, One-part polyurethane sometimes has a hard time with epoxy, but two-part almost always good to go as far as my experience. Also, cheers to Ralph Field. Thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh. Ralph Field, cheers. All right. Gracias, amigo. And can I answer a question? Absolutely. Because <clears throat> I saw one a few minutes ago, and, and, and it's a great question, only because I just learned the trick recently. Um, the question was, uh, how do you get bubbles out of uh, varnish? And a particular case that I used it for was a clear epoxy. Um, great question. Two, two ways, I think. One is uh, each coat that you put on, do it thin. Uh, don't try to put too much on at a time. Uh, but a great trick I learned just recently is <clears throat> take a spray bottle, like just a misting kind of a bottle, uh, put acetone in it, and just mist it over the piece uh, when it's wet. So you just right after you put it on, just a few minutes after you put it on. <clears throat> and I was, I was amazed. Uh, there were a lot of bubbles on the surface. I recently made a surfboard actually for Desiree's dad and his um, uh, restaurant. And um, just misting acetone over it, it just popped all the bubbles mm. and then evaporated. That's so interesting. Yeah, it was yeah. a never great trick. It was, it was a YouTube trick, I learned. Very cool. <laughs> well, and, on, and on that same note, another thing we've talked about is trying to, if you're sealing the wood for the very first time, like you don't have anything on the wood yet, is do it at a time of day where the temperature is falling, not rising. Because if the temperature of the wood is rising, then the air inside the wood is expanding, mm-hmm. and so air is escaping from the wood. Whereas if the temperature of the wood is cooling down, then it's actually contr- the air is contracting and it's sucking air in. And so that'll help to not only reduce the bubbling, but also to pull the epoxy into the grains of the wood. So that's another good trick. Yeah, very cool. Also, hey mom, Sumada. Uh, and then Marvin was asking, ¿En qué parte de Honduras estamos? And we are in uh, Rotan, Honduras, in one of the Bay Islands. Cool. Uh, so Christopher Keeler has a good question for the big man. He says, where do you source your exotic wood from? The big box stores are limited. Mm. Yes, I agree. Um, <clears throat> for the projects that I did on uh, for Jordan and Desiree, um, really just two places. Uh, we live in uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and then actually we're uh, seasonal folks for Sarasota, Florida as well. And uh, in Pennsylvania, they have excellent sources of uh, oak, cherry, maple, uh, and walnut. Uh, excellent sources. You can find uh, folks, as I did, that own their own mill, process their own wood, and uh, you usually get it for a lot uh, less money than the box stores. Um, for the teak work that we did, uh, we actually we got it from a, a lumber yard in uh, Key Largo, Florida. 
There you go. Uh, I've got another really good question. Barry Carlton says, has your dad ever sailed before, and what does he think about it now? Or had your dad ever sailed before Atticus? Actually, uh, I, I dabbled with sailing uh, when I was in college. Uh, I actually built. Um, I've, always, I've always liked doing stuff with my hands. Um, and in college, I had the opportunity to make, uh, with a mold, a, a fiberglass sailboat. Um, oh, gosh. I'm going to forget the name, the class of the boat. Yeah, I can't remember either. It was one of those that. real small, uh, single-person um had a deck to it and a dagger board for the keel mm-hmm. um, and sailed with that. But the first time actual sailing was with Jordan and Desiree. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and what do you think about it, sailing? Love it. Yeah? Yeah, <laughs> it's fun. Jordan took me for a sail, uh, what, a couple days ago. Uh, went to just another portion of uh, Roatan <clears throat> for an overnight thing, and it was a blast. Yeah. We got a couple of ghost stealers. Mom, you want to see ghost stealers? <laughs> Love you guys. Whoever said that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dave, Dave Hill, and we got a couple of. Um, and then Bill Welsh says, "Yeah, Pittsburgh." All right. Mm. Well, and then uh, there was another good question. It, okay, a couple people have asked, and so I'll read Ernest Dougherty's uh, question. But I know that a couple of you guys have asked the same question says, hey, big man, did you do woodworking as a hobby or as a career? Um, both. Well, not a career. I did have a job in college uh, for two years um, working at an uh, antique store that would buy antiques that needed work. I was the woodworker who would either uh, replicate drawers, table legs, uh, chair pieces, whatever might be broken and they would refinish it and uh, sell it. And so I did that for a couple years. But other than that, it's all been hobby, uh, lifetime hobby. I love it. Um, up in uh, Pittsburgh, we have a, the basement of our house is, is the entire footprint of the house. And so I have a wonderful shop and uh, just love doing it. Cool. All right. Well, uh, oh, Bill Connolly says, damn, I'm late again. It's cool, man. You're, you're fashionably late. See? <laughs> Otherwise, we might not give you a shout-out halfway through the thing. I've got a question if you don't have one. Uh, well, I was going to say we could show more, one more projects. One more question. Okay, RV Speedy asks, have you ever built a bulkhead, Steve or Jordan? Uh, I have. Have you? you? I don't think so. You no. built a bul- bulkhead? Yeah, on Footloose. Oh, yeah. Although don't tell the Coast Guard about that. <laughs> they are not aware of that bulkhead oh, being replaced. Yeah, basically, well, I can say it because the owners I care about don't own it anymore. But uh, <clears throat> the uh, one of the uh, catamarans that we worked on in Key West, the forward bulkheads that the four-stay bridle on one hull, no, I'm sorry, both hulls attached to, terminates to, uh, they were rotten. Because the chain plate goes through the hull at the bow, you know, so it's definitely an area that's prone did you for say leaking. You could just scoop through it. You could push your thumb through yeah. parts of the bulkhead. Now it was a massive bulkhead that actually was made out of uh, hardwood. Hmm. So like oak? yeah, it it was like a combination. It was like plywood, and then they and then they put hardwood on it also. Hmm. Um, so it was this massive thing, and that's why it never failed. But yeah, we did replace that with uh, with foam and fiberglass. Yeah, but we 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 didn't uh, didn't end up going through the proper channels to let people know exactly what was going on. Okay, I lied. Two more questions. They'll be quick. So one, what am I drinking? Sauvignon Blanc. Two, uh, Di Narik asks, what project didn't hold up, and what would you do differently? That's a great question. But let's talk about woodworking content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I would say probably the teak bending. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the most interesting one to talk yeah. about. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, it didn't hold up, but, but we didn't need it. Uh, <clears throat> when Jordan wanted to uh, replace the rub rail on Atticus, um, I jumped right in and, and decided, well, we've got to do some uh, uh, wood bending. So we bought a big, long PVC uh, pipe. Uh, hooked it up to a tea kettle and uh, made a steam box, which actually worked relatively well. Um, but it turned out that the rub rail was narrow enough and the pieces were long enough that it bent on its own. And so we didn't need to do that at all. Well, not to mention that the teak didn't really steam, remember? Well, the teak 
softened when we steamed it, but it didn't retain the shape afterward. Yeah. Because we had steamed it, and then we had created, what would you call that? Like, that we bolted, that we clamped it to, to make a shape? Oh, a, a jig, a bending jig. Yeah, we, so we made a be- like bending jigs for the teak <laughs> to yeah. literally clamp it after it was softened from the steam. And uh, apparently teak doesn't do that. <laughs> we were treating it like it was oak. And so... Oh, thanks, Jim. Yeah, the boat I built in college was an El Toro. Yeah, oh, there you go. There we go. <laughs> yeah. And Marvin said, you were so close to my home, 35 minutes away from Livingston. Sorry we missed you, Marvin. That would have been cool to get an insider's perspective of that area. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, sorry about that, Marvin. Next time. We may be going back. We'll see. Yeah. Hopefully not. Yeah, well, we'll, <laughs> we'll find out. But uh, just FYI, the rubber all actually worked out relatively well. Um, just that we didn't have to steam to get the right bend. And uh, Jordan did a good job of uh, <clears throat> creating scarf joints. Uh, it's long uh, longitudinal joints to make sure that the joints stay together, uh, and pinned it all to the to the gunnel of the of Atticus. Worked out great. Yeah, the real trick with that ended up being connecting all the scarf joints before we tried to install it, so that you could get enough leverage at any given point on the boat, so that you could create that curve and then bolt it to the hold a deck joint so without putting those joints together once you got to the bitter end you you wouldn't have a lot of leverage on it and especially that'd be in the mid sections where there's more of an extreme curve and so uh so we ended up just scarfing all these pieces together and then you know being able to have the leverage to pull on it and then bolt that bad boy and And heather thank you cheers to you she says for wine and wine is pretty expensive in Central America, so thank you. <laughs> All right, cheers, Heather. <laughs> um, okay, so go back to some projects. Yeah. All right, so for those of you that are just joining us, we're going to go over a bunch of the woodworking projects that the big man himself, my father, was able to help us with during the refit. And then David will get to your question. It's a good one. Yeah, yeah, good <laughs> Okay, so we we went over this. Now, you were saying that it was dovetail joints that you did. Yeah, that's the forward hatch uh, that we did do out of teak. And I use dovetail joints there because they're about the strongest joint that I know of. Uh, and I knew that forward hatch was going to take a lot of abuse, uh, walking on it and just slamming up and down. Um, but again, uh, Jordan did the finish work there and it's beautiful. It's just a, to me, it's a beautiful piece. Yeah, and then I should say that Desiree did the, d- the pattern or the design of the non-skid tape on the top. And I thought that was pretty darn cool. Put it to us. Yeah, oh. Put it to us. Bring it in, team. <laughs> Hatch team. Good work. Boom. <laughs> Do that one more time. The blue guy explode. Yep. <sighs> All right. <laughs> nice one. So anyway, yeah, and then we actually used uh, Sika Flex to to fasten the Lexan to the wood or to secure the, the Lexan to the wood. So there's no fasteners uh, connecting that Lexan, half-inch Lexan, to the teak. And just a second... Uh, laminated a second piece of teak all on the inside to be the, the rabbit or the the support for the lexan. Yeah, basically to give the wood enough surface area so that the the Sika flex could have a lot of surface area on both the wood and the the lexan so that it could attach Let's well. Let's cut to a couple questions before we go to the next project. Cowboy Scallywag, nice username, says on your spray dodger. Did you use topside paint over the epoxy slash fiberglass? We, uh, on the hardtop, we used Nervion, which is basically Mexico's version of uh, uh, all grip. So it's, it's Mexico's, you know, most expensive, nicest uh, polyurethane uh, 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 top coat, you know, paint. Uh, so yeah, so Nervion, I don't think you can get in the States. You really don't want to, but if you're in Mexico, uh, it's the, it's the best option to go with. And then David Hughes, cheer to you. He says, watch every single video. Love you, bud and bud. Aw. Cheers, David (laughs) Hughes. David. Nice. Cool. (laughs) Which one's your favorite? I'm curious. Do you Mm. have a favorite? Good question. Um, yeah, what's your favorite episode? David was asking about marine grade plywood. Can you find that? Uh, day. Up. Yeah, David Albright says, "What advice can you give on marine grade plywood? 
All marine plywood is not the same. I am not impressed with the variety I have gotten at Lowe's Hardware. Any source ideas on marine wood? Yeah, I would. <clears throat> I wouldn't. The big box stores aren't the best for specialty stuff like that. Um, there is a uh, lumber yard in. Uh, it's actually Mars. For those of you that know Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania's got some incredibly named towns. Uh, <laughs> but there's a Mars, Pennsylvania, that has a great lumber yard. Uh, exotic woods and marine grade plywood. Um, yeah, you have to find a. Uh, in fact, I think there was one in Key West too that had some really good marine. Yeah, uh, grade mm -hmm. plywood. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you really have to find somebody that kind of specializes in it. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Cool. And then Scott <coughs> Rotten, nice username again. <laughs> Jordan and Des, howdy from Texas. Awesome. Cool. That was all. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is all. <laughs> howdy, Scott. <laughs> all right. So I'm gonna jump back into the pictures here. Um, oh, there's another good one of the forward hatch. And then there's, so you can see, and I'll just real quick talk about what we did there. Those are the dovetail joints that you're looking at. And we didn't do the best job, but the, the coloration that you see there at the dovetail joint is where we used uh, epoxy and sawdust as a filler to fill the small imperfection at the end of the dovetail joint there dovetail joint mm -hmm. so basically there's a there's a slight gap we filled it with epoxy and uh and uh wood dust now i think that we could have done a much better job at uh creating finer wood dust first of all goes a long way we that was kind of made with a higher grit um and i also i'm not even certain that we used uh the teak really I can't remember. We're but anyway, to be honest, I'm actually not super good at that, at using wood dust to uh, create a filler that has a good color. So if any of you guys have uh, advice on how to color match wood with wood dust uh, or sawdust, I'd be really curious to know how you guys do it because it always seems to have an odd color to me. And Sam Lewis says, howdy from Thailand. Awesome. No. And then uh, Marvin <clears throat> asks, are you planning on going back to Belize? Um, and as, as much as we've loved the places we've visited so far, our big, big goal is to be able to cross the Pacific in 2020. So um, Jordan is really excited about visiting a lot of places in the Caribbean. Um, but my big goal is to just get to some hurricane hole where we can get all the projects that we need done for the uh, Pacific crossing so that we can cross the Pacific. So we probably won't be heading back to Belize. Yeah. But real quick, Gus Jonesing says, extend your dovetails when joining, then plane it out. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, that would be good. Uh, but they weren't. You were just talking about the slight, <clears throat> the slight gaps that were in there, right? I think they were pretty flush. <clears throat> they they weren't quite. You can see there. I ended up having a slight oh, gap. Oh, okay. Now no, but I, I agree. You do your dovetails a little proud, and um, scrape them or, or sand them. And, and just FYI, I used a uh, just a store bought dovetail jig. Actually, I bought mine at Rockler. Mm, cool, cool. Rock on. Okay, so back into projects here, and then Bud, you can look at the next comment. Yeah. Uh, oh, and then another good image of the, the teak that we use. There you are. Oh, there you go. What's this big guy? That's well, here, the... let's start with this. Go ahead there. Okay. Those are the washboards. Uh, and actually see a little bit up in the upper left-hand corner there, uh, some of the cockpit area. That's all ma uh, mahogany. Uh, we redid the entire uh, sliding hatch. And there you go. Uh, sliders and the bottom plate there is all out of mahogany. <clears throat> and... Um, the washboards and the washboards are, are solid mahogany. Uh, I got that at that uh, lumber yard in Mars, and um, you can barely see it there. But I did wood burn the um, Atticus line drawing. Sorry, right. I'll get that up there. There you go. So that's actually the Allied mm -hmm. C Win 30 that I wood burned onto the uh, one of the two washboards. That was a lot of fun. Wood burning is, uh, I mean, woodworking in general is a hobby of mine. Wood burning is something that I love to just uh, kind of putz around with. Uh, real quick, uh, Claude Ellerb, Ellerb, is that how you pronounce your name? Let me know because I'm terrible with pronunciation. But he says, I've watched all your episodes, buds. That's really sweet. Thank Rock on, so Claude. Much. 
Cheers. All right. <laughs> cheers, You're man. You're awesome. And Joseph Heron. <laughs> ah, Joseph. Says, cheers. Katie and myself enjoyed the hell out of your Belize Atolls videos. Cheers. Oh, cool. Thanks, Joe. Oh, and Ralph Fields. And Thank Ralph you very Fields. Much. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Gus Jonesing says, awesome job on the washboards. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, I think I was going to say something about that, but now I forget. Cool. Well, you know what I always thought was interesting is growing up, the big guy would uh, do like one, for the most part, you oh, would do yeah. one wood burning image every year. So he would sign it with his wood burning tool, but then he would also put the year on it and he had this wall and it was like there's 2014, 2015, <laughs> 2016. And in a lot of ways, I think the Atticus one was probably your... Was one of the years. Yeah, it was like your 2000... 15 or something yeah, like that so. yeah so that's, that's pretty awesome. cool yeah. cheers sean reed it's been really fun chatting with you on facebook by the way cheers You're sean. amazing thank you thanks for thanks a lot buddy um, we got a really good question from dimeric he says where the finish has broken through on the hatch will you have to strip the whole piece uh n no i i don't intend to and uh let me just like let me just see what we've got here yeah so you can see in both these images on the corner um, it's sort of failed and then right there you can just barely make it out on the corner um, and that's that that's exactly where it's gonna fail first is on especially sharp edges and sharp corners so the first thing you can do to keep that from happening is trying try and round as many corners as you can um, if if the thing in question is gonna be indirect sunlight um, and also you know uh, uh, exposed to being chafed by lines and whatnot but beyond that, what I'll probably do is anywhere where it's actually gotten the uh, sealer coat or the epoxy to bubble off of the wood itself, that I'll just sand all the way down to wood and then scuff the entire area and then build it back up with epoxy. And so that's what I like about epoxy is that it's very quick to build up. So again, I mean, we're talking, I could probably get three coats onto that one affected area in an hour and a half, and, or real, realistically a little bit less than that, and, uh, and then let that cure overnight, and then the next day start my all bright, all bright application. <laughs> in which case, at that point, I probably would not only all bright over the new epoxy, but I would also do a maintenance coat on the entire thing. So basically with Albright, it's got UV inhibitors that, and I'm not sure how it works exactly, but it, it, it loses its effectiveness over time. It loses its ability to block UV. So the big guy did plastics. That, that was his whole career was in plastics. Do you know how UV inhibitors work? Uh, I'll say no. No. <laughs> cool. Well, it was worth a try, right? <laughs> we learned so, a lot about the two kinds of plastic. Oh, thermoplastic and thermoset plastic? Yes, thermoset. That's going to be the topic of next week's live stream. <laughs> yes. The difference between thermoset and thermoplastic. Plastic. Yes. Thermosets <laughs> don't melt. Right. There you go. Because nice one, bud. Glad it's. <laughs> <laughs> that, um, was, that was our discussion over dinner the other night. Yes. But, so, but real quick, I just want to say, so because... Uh, Albright and other uh, 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 polyurethane top coats and varnishes in general, they lose their UV inhibiting capacity over time. And so you want to do maintenance coats. So you want to add, you know, at least three coats a year, at least. And uh, so in, in repairing that uh, uh, forward hatch, I would then repair it with epoxy, scuff the entire thing, and then probably apply three maintenance coats of, uh, of uh, polyurethane. A couple more questions. Uh, Kenneth Richter asks, uh, do you guys know Scott and Jesse from Sailing Moksha? And if you do, do you have any advice on them for their repairs they need after Michael? We don't know them, but we will check out their channel. Thanks for the, the tip. And then Scott Rotten says, daughter just got a commercial sewing rig. Any good sources on upholstery and marine foam? Um, I would say check out sailrite.com. Um, they're a little bit pricey, but you know their foam is top quality and their their specs are amazing. And if you call their customer support, they will talk to you for hours. Um, I've done and, it before. <laughs> and latex. 
Uh, and sleeponlatex.com. She they do um, latex, all latex uh, toppers and mattresses. Um, they usually do latex foam for just normal consumers, like latex mattresses. But they also have toppers, and so. Um, as a DIYer, I actually bought two latex toppers and used an electric kitchen knife to cut our V-Birth um, foam. So it's not necessarily what Sleep on Latex does, um, but that's what we did. And they, they might be able to, I think they do custom built uh, mattresses. So Sleep on Latex and SailRight.com. Yeah. And I'd, I'd like to throw in too, I just remember what I wanted to say about the washboards. Um, the design I used for the uh, Allied C Win 30 on the wood burning, uh, actually kind of an interesting note is the same line drawing that uh, the kids used on their Attica swag, which by the way we all we all have on. We all have swag. <laughs> oh, I've got the quote shirt. Yeah. What do you have, big guy? And I've got this, the one with the uh, line drawing in the back. So that's the same drawing that uh, I used on the washboards. Is the one that's on the uh, crew these shirt. Atticus crew shirts. And Jordan had to get a special crew shirt. His says captain. <laughs> well, that's because I'm the captain. True, true. He's like, what do you want, want on yours? And I was like, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And then and then the bud yes. has a bud t-shirt. And a bud t-shirt. <laughs> and I will say, ladies, this isn't my favorite shirt. I probably should be pushing this shirt. But I'm going to try another design um, a little bit like more flowy shirt um, but i still love the concept bud and then we've got the logo back there so be twinsies with me yeah well and, and real quick we got um ed russell says my favorite episode was um atticus uma versus atticus great times uh -huh. and then hugh van dunn says yeah suck through the pain <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's awesome. right suck through the pain van dyne <laughs> van dyne excuse me <laughs> And then uh, Des, uh, Ceiling SV Someday says, Desiree, what did you practice sewing on? Did you use Sunbrella? That's a good question. And I would, as much as, as expensive as Sunbrella is, I would practice on it or go to like a, a local upholstery store and get um, some kind of marine grade scrap Sunbrella because I practice initially on like really cheap kind of flimsy material that wasn't uh, marine grade. And it puckered a lot, and it just it didn't work out right. So um, what I ended up doing after all the failed attempts was I went to a canvas shop, and I just asked them if they had any scraps that I could use. And that's that was a great way to learn and make a lot of mistakes. <laughs> yeah. I'll also mention, too, that I mean that technique crosses um, uh, craftsmanship, ah. and the same thing as sewing is woodworking. Uh, practice. Uh, just take a piece of scrap wood. Uh, like those dovetail joints. Mm. <clears throat> just take a piece of scrap wood, make sure your jig's fixed up. Uh, just practice two or three times before you actually do the real piece. Mm, that's a good idea. Rock on. Stephen Ford says, Y'all have inspired me so much since you first started working in Atticus. I hope to be getting my own boat within the next year. Can't wait to start my own adventure. Awesome. You're going to love it. Rock <laughs> on. And then this is a little off topic, and after this we should probably get back to, to woodworking, but... I, I'd be curious to know what you have to say, bud. Mm -hmm. Jay Martin says, your vids show Desiree <laughs> doing all the heavy work. Does, just, does Jordan do anything or just sit around and play captain? Um, I've, got, I've got my own opinion on that, but what do you think, bud? I feel really bad for Jordan because he's got a lot of haters. When and Anytime any, I do any kind of physical labor, people are like, she's a woman, she shouldn't be lifting things. Um, and I feel very differently about that. I feel like I want to put everything I have into Atticus, and if I can lift something, I'm going to. Um, and so the way that our kind of role breakdown works right now is Jordan is our editor 100%. I know nothing about video editing, and so he's basically just typing away. On all those videos where I'm doing a lot of physical labor and shopping and all that stuff, he's just back at the boat in his own little bubble just like trying to trying to make the videos work so it might seem like i'm i'm like doing more of the work on atticus um but we share responsibilities in a way that makes both of us um stimulated and happy and proud of our work and to <laughs> me that's the core of it right is that w it's for anybody that might be concerned about our our delegation <laughs> of responsibility um we talk about it a lot mm -hmm. and so we're both constantly communicating like 
okay, do you feel like you're taking on too much? Like, how, how do you want to deal with it? Like, who should do what this week? Blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And so we're, we're constantly uh, working on that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But specifically things like getting laundry done, groceries, water. water. A lot of the things that we film in the harbors that we go to, Desiree ends up doing that work. Um, you know, back in the day, you know, I, I was able to do a lot of like fiberglassing for money, whereas Desiree was in air conditioned doing sewing. So, you know, roles, uh, our roles and the difficulties of those roles fluctuate over time. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, to me, I, I, I'm a big fan of letting Desiree decide what she wants to do and what she's comfortable with. So. Yeah, and we're very flexible. Like Jordan is in his own world, like I said, editing eight to 10 hours a day, which doesn't sound very difficult, but if you've ever just mentally tried to tackle something creative for 10 hours a day, four or five, six days in a row, it is very taxing. So, but one of the issues that we do have sometimes is I'll go out for like four hours and I'll be just freaking exhausted. Um, and I'll come back and just want to just kind of stare at the ceiling. Um, and we have to talk about, okay, well, I've I've been out doing physical things, so I'm physically exhausted. I need a physical break. Um, whereas Jordan might be mentally exhausted, so I'll have to push him off the boat and say, okay, you need to go for a walk right now because you're not being productive. So we're, we try to share those responsibilities as much as we can. And uh, we have decided recently to uh, train me up on editing. So Jordan's old laptop uh, started just shit in the bed essentially <laughs> and so we got a new editing laptop and what we're going to do is i'm going to use his old laptop uh to help uh the editing process a little bit so that he gets some more uh free time because what ends up happening a lot is we'll get to a new place and i'll actually do all the provisioning and uh filling up on gas and uh water and everything and i'll meet a lot of the locals and i'll basically know a town like the back of my hand in like two days Whereas Jordan is on the boat just, just like this. And I have spent like a week on the boat. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, you know, I, Key Cocker's pretty cool, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I haven't even been ashore yet. Yeah, and all the locals <laughs> think I'm just making up this like mysterious husband. They're like, where's yeah. your husband? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, he's working. <laughs> yeah. But uh, who was it that said... Anthony Shellnut says she's the boss, right? <laughs> Basically, I even said that to the port captain in Livingston and uh, in Guatemala, and I was like, "Well, I'm the captain," because he's like, "Well, which one of you is the captain?" I'm like, "Well, I'm the captain, but she's the boss." And he like looks at me, he's like, "It's the same all over the world." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, Bill Connolly, he says, "A little for the fun." Thank you. Cheers. Cheers, Bill. Thank you very much. And then I think we also had a New Zealand donation here that we didn't get to. Oh my gosh, I'm Stephen so sorry. Shared. Stephen Shared. Oh. Stephen Shared. How do you say that in a Kiwi accent? He says, keep it up, love your show from New Zealand. From New Zealand. Gracias, amigo. <laughs> and I'll answer a question I just saw uh, earlier. Uh, somebody asked, who's the guy on the left? Um, <laughs> <laughs> who's the good looking guy? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm Jordan's dad, and, I, and I've got to say this, I'm incredibly... Um, Proud to be here sitting with him. Uh, I, like you folks, watch every episode, as does Rita. And, um, man, it's just incredible to actually be here. It's wonderful. Aww, thank you. And Acheron33 has asked twice, uh, if you were to do it all over again, are there any major things you would change? Would you spend more on your boat or get a bigger boat? Or would you do a full re rebuild before heading on adventures? Um, I'll start it off while Jordan gets here, but um, I think starting off with a 30-foot boat is a really great way to go. Um, the only thing I would have done a little bit differently is seen like maybe 50 other boats or like 20 other boats. Um, we basically bought... Uh, the first boat that we physically both went to look at. We had been doing a lot of research as to the characteristics that we wanted for a blue water sailboat and Atticus fit all that criteria. But I think we got really excited emotionally about the experience and so we just dove right into um, at buying Atticus. So uh, if you haven't checked out our live stream about uh, five tips for buying a budget blue water sailboat, check that out. Uh, has a lot of our reflections on the boat buying process. What would you add to that? Um, yeah, and you know, I've thought about this a lot because I watch other sailing channels and I start to ask myself, like, I see other people doing what we're doing 
and going through a whole lot less pain and suffering than we went through. <laughs> and so I start to ask myself, why did that happen? <laughs> like, why did it suck so much for us? And I think a lot of that comes down to the fact that we just didn't have the cash to get a boat that was ready to go. And so we did have to buy a fixer upper and then fixing a boat up is, is pain. And in fact, <clears throat> when we got the boat surveyed, when we got Atticus surveyed, I remember, uh, what was his name? Reef Perkins. Reef Perkins in Key West. And you can go back to like episode three, three. to see him. And uh, I just remember he told us, he was like, I got a buddy that's got a boat. You should buy his boat. It's almost ready to go. And we're like, no, we like this one. He's like, well, let me tell you something. Like, if you want a couple years of pain and misery, go ahead and buy this boat. <laughs> and we were like, yeah, whatever, Reef. Yeah. He, he was like, yeah, whatever, Reef. And I was like, Jordan's so attractive and charming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so anyway, uh, I, I agree with Reef now. You know what I mean? That was a lot of pain and suffering. Yeah. And so in reality, to answer your, your question specifically, like would we have saved up more money? I think that had we any inkling of how difficult what we did would be, I think we would have just stayed in yachting for another year. Yes. That being said, I was saving up for my own personal adventure, so I don't think I would have continued waiting around for another year on this hypothetical dream. Yeah, and that and and it's you can't overlook that, right? Like the timing was perfect for us because I'm if if I told her like, "Hey, let's just stick in yachting another year and make some more money." Like she was sort of, she had her own thing going. She was ready to go and, and uh, backpack around the world by herself. And so I sort of like commandeered that plan a little bit. So it's, it's very hard to say shoulda, woulda, coulda because it, things might have turned out totally differently. But in general, I would say if you have a method of making enough money where you can save money and you don't mind that job, like it's, it's somewhat enjoyable to you, it's probably more enjoyable than <laughs> fixing up a boat. Mm -hmm. And so think of it like that. Every hour you spend working at your job is an hour or two or three or a whole day maybe that you're saving fixing up a boat. Mm -hmm. Now, again, that said, if we hadn't refit Atticus and gone through all that pain, then we wouldn't have been able to finance cruising because mm -hmm. we weren't making money off of YouTube for mm -hmm. the first part portion of our cruising. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we were making money from doing fiberglass jobs and doing sewing jobs. And so again, it's really easy to look back and say, well, if we had done it differently, it would have been better mm -hmm. because I'm actually not certain that's the case. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of variables at play there and it mm -hmm. worked out pretty darn well. And this is the last thing I'll say about it. at the end of the day, it's not about how you did it. It's about the fact that you did it. You know what I mean? Like it, it don't worry about if you're doing it perfectly. Don't worry about if someone's doing it better than you. The goal is do it, like make it happen. Right. And, and by whatever means necessary. So that's all I'll say about that. Can I add some of that? Yeah. Um, one of the first questions was, you know, what did Reed and I think as parents of you guys doing this whole adventure? <clears throat> and I think that question is, is key because two things. The boat they bought needed a lot of work, as, as you guys all know. Um, as a parent, I thought that was great because at the end of the day, both Desiree and Jordan knew every aspect of that boat. Mm -hmm. They had repaired almost every aspect of that boat. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I think that's great. I mean, you're going to be out in the open ocean. You better know every aspect of that boat. Uh, you buy a boat that is ready to go and just jump out and go. I mean, you might not be prepared. And I think that really helped them to become prepared. Um, and the other part of that question from kind of a parent point of view it took them three years to refit i mean what a better test on on their willingness to stick with it um <laughs> you know and and you could tell a year into the, the whole effort that that's was going to be something they really wanted to do and i thought that was great oh that's a good point <laughs> yeah thanks big guy yeah no it's it's totally true in fact a couple people in fact dave even said um, <clears throat> Dave said, you also wouldn't be as capable or confident when stuff breaks on Atticus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, right. you can't, you can't, uh, it, it's, it's difficult to recognize how much value there is in that. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot because now when stuff breaks on Atticus, 
we're we're very quick and capable at, at dealing with it. I wouldn't say very quick. <laughs> we have a little panic attack. We're we're a lot more <laughs> capable at dealing yeah. with it than we would have been otherwise. Yeah. Yeah, that it's yeah, always difficult. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um qu- couple quick questions. Um Paradise City Microfarm asks, Desiree, are you planning on any sewing projects in the near future? Always inspiring. Um we do have a um Ford hatch uh uh, sun protector and wind scoop and rain protector coming up in the in Guatemala, um, and then NACL HTO H2O Saltwater asks which sewing machine do you have? And I have the Sailrite LSZ1, and it's amazing. I always say it's kind of like a MacBook Pro or any kind of Mac uh, device. It's just plug it in and it works, and there's no problems. Real quick, I'm sorry. Marvin or Oriana says, "Hey Jordan, have you got a nickname in the travels you've done in the Spanish-speaking countries with Desiree? If not, I would like to nickname you Captain Mojito." <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> from from here on out, if someone calls me Captain Mojito, I'll get what you're saying. You have so, to say Mojito. Mojito. There you go. Captain Mojito. There I'll be like, go. see. Captain Mojito. Okay. Sorry. What do you say, Capitan? Capitan Mojito. It does, you know, it's <laughs> tomato. Tomato. What's Spanish for tomato? Tomate. Tomato, tomate. You know. <laughs> okay, Cowboy Scallywag. We missed uh, a ten dollar donation. He oh. says, "Just a small donation towards an AIS before you guys head across the Pacific. Just installed an O N W A A I S chart plotter for under four hundred dollars. Well worth it, guys. Cheers. Rock on, Thank cheers, so dude. In fact, we do have." I, I don't want to spoil the point, but we do actually now have an AIS-enabled VHF. Yes, Brian, one of our uh, YouTube subscribers and Facebook uh, followers, uh, sent us an AIS because he's amazing. Rock on. Okay, so let's, if you don't mind. Nope, and then did you see Hugh Van Dyne's donation? Negative. Hugh Van Dyne says, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. (laughs) Thank you, Hugh. Hey, rock on, (laughs) Hugh. And then Daniel Parker also has a twenty dollars super chat. Thank you very much. Cheers, Daniel. cheers. That's okay. awesome. <laughs> okay, images. Go back yes, to woodworking. Yes. Go okay. back to woodworking. Capitan Mojito, back. back to Madera. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Oh, sorry guys. Hold on. Okay, so we we did the forward hatch. So we did the companionway, and again we, did, we redid the entire uh, companionway assembly there those are the washboards <clears throat> oh and here's the turtle hatch um, as we had talked about before we had kind of designed it to be extremely strong mm-hmm. um, both the turtle hatch uh, again this painted white there and you can see the sliding hatch uh, after that that's mahogany uh, <clears throat> there's ribs up underneath each one of those that help strengthen that uh, upper veneer um, I can walk on it, and as Jordan always says, I'm a pretty big guy. Um, <laughs> it'll support any weight that uh, needs to go on it. Cool. Okay, and then uh, yeah, and that's it. So Here's we've Jordan. we've gone over everything. And uh, I just wanted to thank those of you who have donated through PayPal tonight because they do take like a significantly lower chunk chunk of the change. So thank you to Ruben Rosario, uh, Etheridge. Sorry, Barry Etheridge <laughs> and da, 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 Steve Jennings. You all right. guys are all amazing. Cheers, Cheers guys. guys. And so, just to be, you know, in the spirit of transparency, basically, YouTube or Google it takes about 30% of Super Chat, whereas uh, PayPal, I don't think there's any uh, uh, yeah. money taken away. So, we like Super Chat because it's convenient, don't get us wrong, but if you guys ever find the time, uh, you can head over to our PayPal account that our buddy DV Zyre Dave is always pushing for us. So thank you very much, Dave. And can we real quick all thank Dave for Yay. coming tonight? Thank you, Dave. We really appreciate you. It is like 1 a.m. Is that right, Dave? What time is it in <laughs> Ireland? <laughs> yes, he is the most amazing person. I bow down to you, Dave. And check out his YouTube channel. He is restoring his own boat um, and doing really awesome YouTube videos. Uh, and he's always there for us, and I love you, Dave. Thanks so much, Dave. <laughs> so uh, we got Roy Roast or Roy Rost 
He says, love the vids. We started watching after seeing you on Sailing Uma. Oh, cool. My twin daughters, Julia and L Lorelai, want to say hi. Aww, hey, hey Julia and Lorelai. And uh, we are a sailing family on Alberg 30. Rock oh, on. Very so cool. When people are unfamiliar with uh, Allied Sea Wind 30s, which is often, I generally say it's probably the closest boat to it is an Alberg 30. It's just a heavier version of the Alberg, and then they added a mizzen mast. Speaking of small boats, Gus Jonesing asks, considering the size of your boat, do you think you would go single mast if you had to do it over again? Oh, would we go single mass if we could? Mm -hmm. I see. Um, so this is a contentious topic, but basically I think that, um, I've said it before, I want Atticus 2, 2.0, if you will, to be a either a cutter. So yes, I would go with a single mass, but uh, better than a cutter, what I'd like to do is a Solent stay rig. So what I would like to do is to either buy a boat that's already Solent stayed or buy a sloop and then turn it into a Solent stay rig. And basically what a Solent stay, the difference between a Solent stay and a cutter is that a cutter is designed so that it can use both of its head sails simultaneously depending on its point of sail. A Solent stay is designed to only use one of its head sails at a time, but it was a rig that was kind of came into popularity after uh, uh, roller furlings became accessible. So with, the, with roller furlings, you can have two head sails really close together on the foredeck and they terminate really close together on the mast so that you don't need a running back stay. So you basically just have two head sails furled up, ready to go of different sizes. So you can have like a 100% and a 150% Genoa, something like that. So you've always got a light air sail and then, a, uh, and then a more functional working jib ready to go all the time. And then you can have an inner stay you know, ready with a storm sail if you needed it. Okay, real quick. I'm, I don't remember if we thanked Daniel Parker or not. I'm sorry. Um, but thank you so much for your super chat. You're amazing. Thank as you, Daniel. As well as... Do, 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 uh, Fong Do. Janie Barr and Fong Do. I'm so bad with pronouncing Jamie names. and Fong. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Cheers. Yes, and then JeepBoy498 asks, Speaking of Key Cocker, um, where we are going there soon, do you recommend anyone uh, for us to go and see, visit, or socialize with? Love the channel. Keep on cruising, guys. Um, this is very off the beaten path, and I don't know if Linus will re even remember me, but Linus at the fuel dock on the aft end of the island is like my favorite person in the, the world. The leeward side of the, the island. The leeward side of the island is like my favorite person in the world. If you go there and say you know Project Atticus and Desiree, he might tell you his life story, which is super captivating and he's really nice. Yeah, invite him on board for a beer if you're going there for sure. <laughs> or just like go say hi and give him a hug. He's <clears throat> amazing. Um, or uh, I would say something that's really cool about Key Cocker that maybe most people don't know on the mainland or, or even on Key Cocker itself, there are these really cool little lobster shacks. And when the fishermen go out for the day, um, there are these um, stilts that go across the water and it ends in a little lobster shack and they clean all the lobsters so that the waste goes into the ocean. Basically, you can walk to the end of the, one of those lobster shacks and just meet any of the local fishermen and ask them questions. And they're all very friendly and knowledgeable. So um, I would say most of Key Cocker is located on the, what's opposite of Leeward? Windward side of the island. If you just head towards the leeward side of the island and kind of walk around there um, towards BDS, which is Belize Dive Center, um, that's where Atticus was. Um, and it's kind of like the more local side of the island. Uh, that's the part of Key Cocker that I really liked. Rock on, yeah. But yeah, you, you really should. If you're going to Key Cocker, talk to Linus because he'll tell you lots of cool stories about being on the uh, like the city council of a small village. Yeah. And it's he, really fascinating uh, uh, anecdotes and stories. But at the same time, he's actually really shy, so he might just be like, hello. <laughs> yeah, booze him up. Nice to meet you. <laughs> booze him up. That's the trick. Well, but he doesn't drink that much. He had two beers on Atticus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Kenneth Richter says, where's the hat? Uh, we decided not to do a live drawing uh, this week, but we will do one soon, so we'll bust out the hat then. Uh, on another note, one of our um, 
Uh, YouTube fans messaged us and said we should sign Tilly hats and give them away in a drawing. And we actually recently started working with Tilly. Um, so we're going to do that soon. Stay cool. Tuned. <laughs> okay. Um, and then real quick, Sean Lehman says, Ola, what kind of seek flex did you use on the hatch? Is that the same SF you use for everything? So, okay, gosh, it's been a while. But there is there's Sikaflex. I can't remember the na the the number. I'm really sorry. I would have at, at another time I would have been able to. But basically, if you look at the Sikaflex uh, numbers, there's there's one specifically for polycarbonate. Speci like it's like that's what it's specifically designed for, and that's what you want if you're using Lexan. And for I think it works for. Uh, uh, plastics in general, but it's kind of advertises for uh, polycarbonate. So that's the one that you're going to want. It's not their general adhesive that you use for just about everything else. Okay, so we're going to wrap things up, but if you guys have any more questions for Steve, he's with us until this weekend, so ask away. Um, also, if you never want to miss a live stream in the future, you can text uh, Atticus. <laughs> A-T-T-I-C-U-S capital Atticus to And you text notifications. <laughs> also, if you're excited about getting any kind of um, passage making sailing experience, uh, even if you're totally new to sailing, um, we recently started working with saillibra.com. Um, and I went on one of their trips recently in November to get a little bit more experience under my belt. Um, and I met both of the captains and they're amazing and they've got a really awesome tour coming up in the Caribbean uh, beginning in the beginning of February. If you use code PA offshore all caps again PA offshore uh, you'll get a super sweet discount um, and if you have any questions about their charters let me know um, and definitely they, they just treat you so well and you'll get um, Honey buns fried in butter for your watch, and it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that that should be on the yes, poster. Yes, just do that. <laughs> I'd like to, if I could, give a shout out to, yes. to all of our grandkids, only Aww. because it's fun to do. Um, <laughs> only because I wanna. <laughs> in California, uh, there's Sam, Christopher, Nicholas, and Elijah. Um, if, if you pay attention to some of the videos, you can see Sam's and Christopher's senior picture <laughs> in the nav station. Uh, the other kids haven't graduated yet, so their senior picture might come up soon. Mm -hmm. um, Otherwise also, known as the wall of attractive blonde <laughs> young men. <laughs> <laughs> and also um, Kira, Mackenzie, and William. So shout out to everybody. And I guess especially I want to bring up only because it happened yesterday, uh, Christopher is off to a boot camp. So... Thank you very much, Christopher. Good job. Literally, yeah, Christopher joined, joined the Army, and he is off to boot camp. Yeah. So good That's luck, Chris. You're going to do great. We love you, buddy. <laughs> uh, Roy Roast uh, just donated $20, and he said, for the Pacific Crossing. So cheers, Roy. Thank you very much, You're Roy. awesome. Um, and then Lon Pribble <clears throat> says, any plans for a compressor and scuba tanks? Oh. It would be nice, uh, Lon, but we we basically don't have the room. And that being said, we also just took, we splurged and took a free diving course in Utila, Honduras, and we both got down to Jordan got down to a hundred and feet, hundred feet. I got down to ninety feet. So I think our scuba days are behind us. We're both really, really into free diving right now, and we'd like to continue practicing that. Um, okay, that's awesome. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Dave, you're amazing. I bow down to you. Thank you for helping us on every live stream uh, at any minute of the day. I don't know what we do without you. Um, thank you guys for joining us. Any last minute shout outs? Uh, no, that's about it. Uh, I guess real quick, one person does ask how far behind are you on your videos? That's a good question. And we should, I, I do want to mention that because there's been a lot of confusion. We're, we're about three months uh, behind current if you will right so when you watch an episode that's about three months ago and we actually had someone email us explaining to us how hurricane season works the other day <laughs> and because they saw that we were going to the rio for hurricane season and so if it looks like you know the episodes are not in real time that that's why 
And someone emailed me to remind me to update our location on uh, our website, and I did. So thank you so much for letting us know. Okay. All right, gang. Well, anything you want to say? Oh, and Bri Bri says hi. Brian was here the whole time. He's our what? good friend from uh, Key West. Hey, Brian. What's up, buddy? He's he's just he's getting going, cruising the East Coast. He's been cruising for the last couple months. Congratulations, Brian, mm-hmm. and thanks thanks a lot for joining. Mm-hmm. All right, so is there anything that you want to say, big guy, in closing? Oh, just <clears throat> thanks for doing this. I've had a great time. Um, keep supporting the kids. They're they're on quite an adventure, that's for sure. All right. Rock on, guys. Well, until next next time. Cheers. Thanks for coming, guys. That was a lot of fun. Salud. 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 Oh, another new word. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Marvin, you like that one? <laughs> All right. See you guys.